Everybody. what fantastic days we have had here in Sundsvall with with sun with heat uh, never thought a month ago that it actually would be a summer but here it is so uh, still another great day to do an outdoor video or day it's actually uh, evening here it is nine o'clock in the evening <laughs> uh, summer evening warm one uh, I promise in my previous video uh, the movie soundtrack uh, video uh, that uh, I would uh, do a response to a tag that has been out for a while now uh, a thread uh, created by James Griffith hi there James I hope everything is good with you uh, and uh, it is a, a thread about uh, our first experiences with the records uh, we have a first debut album first live album uh, first album with our favorite artists and so on uh, and uh, as the nostalgic person I am I thought it was a good idea to do a response and I will uh, so uh, it is 20 questions so let's get started first record that you uh, that you got by your favorite band or artist. Uh, my favorite band is, as everybody know, Depeche Mode. Uh, and I also, before I go any further, going to explain the the, uh, the situation back then. Uh, you're going to see a whole lot of cassettes, actually, in this video, because uh, cassettes were. Uh, something that I uh, used to have a lot back in the days uh, both uh, bought ones and copied ones uh, I I wanted the music and I couldn't care less than if it was a copied version or it could be an original version uh, so uh, much will, will be around cassettes uh, I wasn't born a record collector uh, I um, the first years uh, I didn't buy that much records at all uh, because it was expensive at the time so I copied a lot and I had a lot of cassettes but I also had some records so these are what I'm <laughs> what my answers are based upon <laughs> uh, uh, Depeche Mode I was uh, the first record that I got by Depeche Mode was a uh, compilation uh, the singles 81-85 compilation but as I uh, if I remember right uh, uh, no compilation for this uh, question uh, so the first studio album I got for Depeche Mode I was very late <laughs> even when it came to copying uh, but the first record that I got studio album was or was back in 1990 uh, I think it was around 93 or something like that and it was a cassette but as I had the vinyl I'd take the liberty to show the vinyl I guess it's much more fun uh, Depeche Mode and Some Great Reward was the first studio album with Depeche Mode that I got uh, and uh, since then it has only kept rolling I have all of them at this moment uh, I remembered when I listened to it the first time uh, some something to do with the opening track really knocked me out I thought it was a fantastic song uh, I really remember that uh, I was really knocked out by that that track make some room here Uh, the first debut album that I ever owned uh, was, ironically, <laughs> uh, the first album that I ever bought. Uh, and I showed it multiple times. I think you know by now that my, the first album I ever bought back in 1986 were Paul Hardcastle's self-titled debut. Uh, 
and uh, this was the first debut album that I got and still have. Fantastic album. Going to co come back to that one later on. Your first live album, and now the first of my cassettes. Uh, back then, I was more into uh, the songs that I heard on the radio uh, because radio bored me more or less. Uh, so, uh, live albums wasn't not something that I was all that interested in uh, or listened to much. Uh, so uh, it took me a while uh, and uh, the first l real live album that I owned I got as a Christmas present uh, by a friend of mine, Otto, who, the one who taught me to, to love jazz uh, and he gave me as a, in a Christmas present this one Lester Young Live Recordings 1949 Royal Roast, New York City uh, a release from Jazz Anthology uh, I have some jazz anthology releases <laughs> on vinyl, but I th th this is definitely the first one, the only one I have on cassette. <laughs> Real great one, uh, smooth, and Lester Young uh, is uh, the main star here, no doubt about it. Uh, your first greatest hits album, I mentioned it already. Uh, it was not only the first greatest hits by my favorite band, it was also the first greatest hits album I ever got. Depeche Mode with uh, the singles 81 to 85. Uh, I got it sometime down in 1980, was seven or eight, uh, 1987 or eight or nine, I think it was late 80s I got it. Uh, your first double album, uh, double albums was not something that I had a lot with to begin to, from the beginning either, uh, mostly because uh, the artists that I liked uh, didn't release that much double albums as a studio album. Uh, so I think my first double album was uh, I think I bought it around 1989 or 90 uh, at a, a thrift store that we had back then called Fyndlaget uh, and uh, I bought it for 10 cent only they had a, some kind of a sellout and um, uh, this album was sold for only 10 cent and it was this Louis Armstrong memorial <laughs> album released on CBS. Uh, I'm not uh, not huge, that huge fan of Lou Armstrong these days, as you know, uh, but back then uh, I was still newly in love with jazz and everything <laughs> went in. <laughs> uh, so uh, I bought this one for 10 cent. And why have I kept it then if I'm not that huge fan of Armstrong? Well, uh, it is uh, something to do with the, the fact that there are some Armstrong that I actually do like and that is older Armstrong uh, from the 20th and the very beginning of the 30s and the first of this double album is actually uh, older recordings uh, with, uh, from, with uh, from the 20s and his uh, uh, first big band uh, and I keep it for that first record. The other record is uh, 50s recording and then we talk in Dixieland and I'm no interested in, in uh, the second record. But I keep it for, for uh, the first record. And nostalgia, of course. Uh, we have uh, the first legendary or classic album single that you own. Uh, that is a question what is counted as legendary or classic uh, <laughs> in my opinion that is uh, your decision what is classic but I guess that we go after uh, what has been selling the most during the years uh, and 
Those orders that I liked in the 80s uh, didn't actually count as legendary like that, uh, with some exceptions. Uh, but I think that uh, this is the one that could count, that I got in around 89. Fleetwood Max Rumors. Uh, a real, real classic. I just love this album very, very much, as you know. It was also the first 70s album that I got and uh, the only one I had for many years. Uh, the first record you ever received as a gift. Uh, this is actually uh, hard to know which one of these, because I have two uh, answers, but I'm not sure which one of them who are, is the, was the first. Uh, either it is or it, I think it mostly points to this direction, that it was a horse hunting high and low that I got in present from my grandmother back in 1986. Uh, I'm not sure though whether it was a birthday present or Christmas present. Uh, because if it was a Christmas present then you have another one because I got two cassettes that year. Uh, and it was this one, this uh, Count Basie, 20 Graves Hits. But I think this was a birthday present, and then this one is the first. And this one is the second. <laughs> but that was, I guess that is uninteresting. Uh, we have the first record that you got, which got you disappointed. Uh, and that was, ironically enough, today it is one of the most important records that I have. I love it till death. Uh, and uh, fantastic record, but when I got it the first time, Paul Hardcastle's self-titled debut, my first bought album ever, I was actually disappointed because I have bought had bought this album because of course of the song 19, no 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 19, the Vietnam song, in hope that the rest of the songs also would be filled with sound effects and, and uh, cool uh, samples uh, and what I first got was 19 in an album version that sounded completely different from the single version and only for that I was disappointed uh, it took me a long time before I got used to it uh, then the rest of the songs with exception from the second single just for money was only uh, smooth jazz, instrumental, not only instrumental, but some songs, but it was like uh, soul uh, jazz songs, uh, many instrumental po songs that was had not sounded nothing like the singles. So I was so disappointed at first, uh, but I actually um, gave it another chance uh, again and again and again, and. Uh, Today, I th it didn't take me long before that. Today, I realized that this is actually a real fantastic album. So, but first, I heard it, I was very disappointed. First record you ever owned by an artist that you would later go on collect seriously? Uh, depends on what you mean with collect seriously, because... Uh, <laughs> Those first artists that I actually bought, uh, I collect seriously. I want to collect Paul Hardcastle seriously, but it's hard to find his albums, but I count that I collect him seriously, <laughs> for example. Uh, but uh, the uh, uh, first artist that uh, I really, uh, that I have a lot with, that uh, I really have been collecting seriously for a while, uh, is this one. And the first one with this was with the German uh, singer Sandra. And uh, the first one I got was this uh, compilation, 10 on 1, the singles, that I got back in 1988, I think. Uh, and it was the first of many records that I had with her. Not all though, because after 95 it's getting harder and harder to get her albums here in Sweden, as she lost popularity here. 
but this was the first that I got by many of many this gorgeous woman uh, we have the record that first introduced you to a specific musical shanger uh, <laughs> I was a little puzzled what you meant what uh, you meant there uh, because uh, it wasn't a record that in got introduced to a musical shanger it was a radio uh, that uh, in 95 percent have introduced me to all shangers it is radio through my life uh, but uh, if it is that easy that is the first record that i got from a certain shanger uh, i pick jazz uh, of course uh, and the first jazz record that i got I was pretty late because uh, when it comes to jazz, I had discovered jazz the first time in 1986 when I was uh, 11 years old, going 12 I think, uh, if I count right. Uh, uh, and uh, I got my first record by on, uh, with jazz back in 1991, four or five years later, because I either recorded from radio or copied from my friend Otto uh, so uh, uh, or got in uh, compilations of Christmas present but the first record I ever bought with jazz was this one Red Norvo Tree I bought it at Finlaget as I mentioned before uh, this is a 50s recording uh, nice one I don't play it all that much these days but it's, it's nice uh, and I showed it before because of the sleeve, because I still think that this sleeve is among the weirdest and creepiest sleeves I see. I don't know what, 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 they were, what they were thinking and what it has to do with any of these songs and with the Red Norval Trio. But it was the first jazz album I bought. Uh, the first uh, record you home taped. Uh, and now we're stepping away from music because the first record I home taped was when I went to uh, uh, Fetis, the, the, uh, something like that. Uh, it was summer and uh, I was uh, listening to these records and I got the idea to copy it on a cassette by putting a cassette recorder next to the loudspeakers uh, belonging to the, the turntable and recording it that way. <laughs> Horrible recording but it was speaking so, so I guess it worked for me. And it was actually these tales with Scooby-Doo. Uh, Swedish acting of course uh, of these, uh, these ones. Basket Mysteriet på Spöken, the basketball mystery on the ghost island, uh, featuring uh, Harlem group Loop Trotters. <laughs> uh, and it was also this one, Scooby Doo and the Mystical Snowmen. So these were the first that I actually copied on a cassette. Uh, we have the first record you ever bought on someone else's recommendation uh, Also very hard one, but I think it was this one that I bought back in 1987 uh, I think it was seven or eight 1987 or eight uh, I played handball back then Hard to believe that today, but I did <laughs> uh, wasn't exactly good at it. I played always on the corners uh, and uh, it wasn't exactly my mm, job to do goals even though I did one during my years <laughs> in handball. But the handball trainer that we had back then uh, for us youngsters uh, he was a big fan of Simple Minds uh, and uh, he, uh, rec he recommended me Simple Minds and recommended me their then latest album once upon a time and i bought this cassette then i then also had bought on vinyl also uh, 
the first record that your parents disapproved of, that was the one was the easiest one because that answer is none. Uh, I don't listen to, for, first of all, I don't listen to those kind, that kind of music that is actually is, uh, parents are scared of. I don't like heavy metal or something like that. So, so uh, and uh, my parents has never uh, actually cared about what I listen to or what kind of records I buy. Uh, they have never uh, disapproved of anything that I have actually bought. Rather, they have uh, actually uh, helped me by, as I said, giving Christmas presents and something like that. So. I can't remember any time when they had disapproved of anything that I have listened to. Uh, which, fir the first record that caused you to lose your mind? I was a little unsure what that actually meant, uh, but uh, it was that that I really got that really got me to fell in love with the album. Uh, I think that. Uh, as I said, the Paul Hart Castle, the first one I was disappointed of, but the second one was better. <laughs> uh, I think this was the sec. This one was the second. Uh, if you don't count Alphabets for Every Young, that I talked about a lot of times, but I didn't own that one until years later. I had it only copied. Uh, but this one, I went down to a gas station and bought this cassette <laughs> uh, where I lived, and uh, I bought this one. It was pretty cheap. And it was uh, German Euro disco band Bad Boys Blue and their album Hot Girls Bad Boys. And you can see <laughs> the stickers Mickey Mouse and Black Pete. Uh, I wasn't that kind of <laughs> collector back then. Uh, but on this album there's a song called I Live uh, that I really, really loved and listened to over and over because I love the production, I love the effects and the uh, one of the singles, Pretty Young Girl, that followed was also a favorite of mine. So I listened to those two over and over again. I thought this was, they were fantastic. So I think this one was the first album that made me lose my mind. Uh, the first record you saw in someone else's collection, uh, and uh, that one was very hard to remember. Uh, I mean, put my, on my mind what record, what records, first records that I uh, first saw in one's collection. Uh, especially since my most uh, influences comes from radio. But I think that uh, the one, first one is in that case would be my father's collection that uh, I saw some times when he played on it. My father loves and loved back then also uh, six, nine, uh, 60s music and uh, also Swedish dancing orchestra, dance bands uh, and there was uh, one record that I remember that he had with a dance band, dance band called Pippis <laughs> it was pretty um, hilariously cult classic sleeve with the uh, musician standing and looking real happy with uh, funny clothes or something like that. Uh, I remember it because there was a song that uh, I heard uh, a couple of times when I was younger uh, and it was a Swedish remake of the Spanish song Cuando Caliata el Sol. Uh, and La Pena Braya Swat 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 And it was a hilariously stupid Swedish verse and I remember it because of that. Uh, but I think that one was the first uh, one that I saw in, in uh, another collection. Uh, the first record you have difficulty tracking down. Also a question that I have problems with. Because I bought what I saw. I didn't go hunting that much back then. Uh, and uh, But I was one song that I really wanted to get a hold of. An album. Uh, and it was uh, a song that I saw on MTV back in 1988 uh, and uh, I fell in love with it. I recorded it also on tape, uh, on, on video, sorry, on video tape. Uh, and uh, it is, was by the uh, Dutch soul pop group Louis Lane and a song called uh, It's the First Time. And back in 1991, 
three years later, I went into our rec the, one of the record stores that we that we had back then, uh, and uh, I checked and I saw this one, and I actually realized that now I finally have found it's the first time. So I was really wanting to have this album, this song, uh, and I, then I finally got it. The first record that you bought a second copy of. I don't buy second copies. Uh, well, I have sometimes now uh, bought um, uh, some that I have on cassette, like Simple Minds, like uh, like that, uh, like the, the Depeche Mode, uh, some great reward. But normally I don't buy second copies because if I have an original of it, I see no reason to buy it again. If it isn't broken, of course. Uh, so uh, the only time I remember this if I did, uh, if I bought a, a duplicate by mistake, uh, and I can't remember the first time I did this, bought a duplicate. But to say something, because it's much more interesting than I, if I just skip it. Uh, uh, I say this one, uh, I didn't buy it, I got it. Uh, I got it in Christmas present twice, uh, the same year, in 1995. Uh, I wished for Madonna's ball ballad album, something to remember, and I got it both from my parents and from my grandmother. <laughs> so so uh, that one was the first I had double of in that case. but. Uh, it is to say something. It's more, much more interesting if I show something than if I just skip it. Uh, your first blind buy, also something that uh, I never did as a, uh, when I was younger because I knew what I wanted. Uh, if I saw it and I realized what it was, I bought it. I didn't did blind buying all that much. Uh, but I think the first time I did it was back in 1990. 1990, I think it was, uh, in the autumn. I started gymnasium, and I went into the record store and uh, to a second-hand record store that we had, and I saw an album with Mink Deville called Coupe de Grasse. I can't show it because I don't have it anymore. I have called it away <laughs> years ago, uh, and uh, I bought it because I heard the name in in radio. Well, the, uh, when I was younger, mentioned that Bruce Springsteen had bought a Mink Deville album. And I thought that if Bruce Springsteen had bought it, maybe it sounds something like Bruce Springsteen. So I bought this Mink Deville album during a lunch, and I went back to school. And my, one of my school uh, mates uh, asked me what it was, and I uh, had never heard of the name. He asked me, do you really know what that is? No. Uh, and you still bought it? Yes. <laughs> got a really surprised look that I bought something that I had no idea what it was. Uh, it wasn't all that good, if I remember right, but I kept it actually longer than I should. But it's now no, not, no longer in my collection. Uh, we have uh, the first record you bought after becoming involved in the vinyl community, and that one was really tough also, because I can't hardly remember uh, what was the first record that I bought uh, after I got uh, did my, after I did my first video? I checked on my first vinyl and CD update, uh, but which one of them I bought the first uh, is hard to remember. But I think it could be this one. So I'm showing this one because this one I showed in my first vinyl and CD update. The Commodore's moving on from uh, 1975. I bought it on at Finn Logget again. <laughs> uh, rest in peace Finn Logget, no longer existing. Uh, so I, I say this one. And finally, the first record that you bought mail order. <laughs> Every question sounds tough, I know that, but this was also very tough because I didn't buy... Uh, I, if it isn't from Ginza, that I showed a couple of times, then I usually don't buy mail order. Uh, so, uh, and, uh, but it didn't take me until I think 1995 until I did my first mail order, and it actually was to uh, 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 
this kind of a subscription uh, organization called Mr. Music. They had records with all kind of uh, compilation each month's greatest hits on the chart that they put together and sold. Uh, and uh, they called me and gave me a fair price to buy this one and I, I actually gave it a chance. I got it through mail this. Uh, Mr. Music Hits number 3, 1996. Well, sorry, 96. Uh, and I got this one with, with the rock set, with bucket heads, with, with uh, Take That, Ace of Bass, Robin, Eternal, so on. And as also a special gift, they had this. I got this one The Greatest Hits of 1995. So these were the first that I actually mail ordered. But as I said, I usually only mail order from Ginza these days. So that was my response. Nice to sit here at the balcony during this summer evening and uh, remember my first records. <laughs> uh, so uh, I hope that you are satisfied with my response, James and everybody else, and that you have a real nice time in the summer. So take care everybody and so long.